What's up everyone, it's Cali with MoneyVest. So in today's video, we are going to be talking about the markets, of course. We did see a little bit of that momentum back higher for the markets. We did start the day off a little bit slower and uh, of course markets picked back up, especially the Nasdaq and the S&P 500. A couple headlines that came out today that were quite interesting that kind of piqued my interest that I want to break down in this video. As always, make sure that you drop a like and of course do drop a subscription here. Do subscribe and of course a link's going to be down below for our Discord and our Patreon couple more spots left with that 16% annual discount that's available for uh, everyone who joins before the end of this month. So a couple more days left uh, if you are interested in joining. And of course, you do get access to all the members only private videos as well as our weekly newsletter that I just started. That's going to be basically my analysis, my opinions, my technical levels, fundamental levels on individual stocks. There's going to be a lot of actionable uh, suggestions in that newsletter that you can take and of course uh, do your own due diligence and make investment decisions and uh, ex access to all the spreadsheets and all the discord channels including trade alerts trade ideas uh, although we'll be moving everything over to the website at moneyvest.com here on march 31st so that is the date finalized that's when we are launching our first beta for all the members only and also do connect with me on instagram my handle is going to be cast wrp so markets here, Nasdaq pushing up to over 16,000, S&P just over 5,000, and the Dow Jones a little bit under 39,000 at the moment. Uh, this right here is quite an interesting headline. Are U.S. stocks in a bubble? History says no. So since 1974, the S&P 500 has risen 100% uh, or more during the three years that preceded every bubble peak, according to an analysis from a team of analysts at Datatrek. And despite the wide ride that stocks have been on, on over the past three years, the S&P 500's performance during this period has been relatively pedestrian. To wit, the index is up 31%, which is only slightly better than the average three-year rolling return of 29%. And the Datatrek team cited several examples to illustrate their point. The S&P 500 doubled during the three years leading up to the October 1987 market meltdown, the dot-com crash, even the post-COVID-19 bull market in January of 2022. Um, and of course, we did see a witness and of course, uh, witness a bear market in 2022 and then a very solid recovery in 2023. But we haven't quite seen that 100% level in the S&P, meaning that it hasn't quite doubled in the last three years. And as a result, we are not quite in a bubble. Now, I think it's also really important to understand that valuations are what really dictate bubbles or not, because price momentum, price action is not the best indicator for whether we're in a bubble or not. It's the valuations at the end of the day. And when valuations get to crazy, enormous, unrealistic numbers, that's when the markets are expected or kind of considered to be in a bubble. Prices can move up and down, fluctuate all over the place based on sentiment and a lot of different other variables, but it really just comes down to fundamentals. The moment the price is disconnected from the fundamentals to an extremely high level and euphoric and greed level, that's what kind of constitutes as a bubble and that's what kind of increases that potential caution for that pullback or for that sell-off. So according to Apollo's Trust and Slock, the median valuation of the 10 largest companies in the S&P 500 is higher now than it was at the peak of the dot-com bubble based on analyst earnings expectations one year out. And this right here basically represents that the current AI bubble is bigger than the 1990s tech bubble as well. However, the difference here, as I've already mentioned before, is that these tech companies actually do have the backing of very, very strong earnings, cash flows, and revenues, as opposed to back in the dot-com bubble here, where there was a lot of concepts and ideas, and everything was kind of based on stories as opposed to actual numbers. This time, it's completely different because a lot of these companies actually do have a lot of earnings and cash flows and revenues to back up their actual valuations. Now, top heavy market has caused the S&P 500 to become more concentrated than it has been in decades. Uh, according to Deutsche Bank, the five largest U.S. companies, Apple, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Amazon, and Alphabet, now count for more than 25% of the market value of the index, the most since 1970s. So as we already know, of course, the market concentration is high because these are the companies that are kind of leading everyday you know, interaction, everyday communication. I'm kind of surprised they did not include Meta. Meta is also, you know, a little bit over a trillion dollar company. And uh, that top six, I'm assuming is going to be accounting for almost a third of the overall index of about 30, 33%. And again, if you include Tesla and AMD and maybe some of the other companies that are super large cap, then, then we're expecting a very, very high concentration in just a few select companies in the US. Now, Barclays also boosting S&P 500 target on strong US economy and big tech profits. And they're saying that strong big tech earnings could push the index now to over 6,000 points while disappointing results, along with a weakening economic backdrop, 
could send the index down to 4,500. Um, and as we already discussed in our newsletter, that the index does have maybe more potential sort of downside targets than it has upside potential benefit. So the risk right now does outweigh the reward. And as a result, the risk reward is not that favorable. In other words, it is unfavorable at the moment from a long perspective. And they also mentioned, and I quote, we believe that the risk reward is tilted towards the bull case as macro data suggests that odds of an economic reacceleration are beginning to outweigh the probability of even a mild recession as well. And this is more of a macro call. What I'm talking about is more of a technical call, meaning that we are overbought, we are concentrated, we do have that market breadth very concentrated and narrow. And as a result, that upside benefit is not as significant as the potential downside risk if there is any type of profit taking on the back of any repricing risk that we may have to kind of look out for this right here is the entire market so amazon slightly down microsoft nvidia slightly lower apple google and meta pushing higher with the financials and we've got you know uh, utilities and basic materials all sectors pushing higher so it was kind of a you know a day where defensives and a little bit of that utility sector pushing higher with technology. And uh, of course, we got communication services pushing up on the back of Meta and uh, I believe Google, both pushing up almost 1%, uh, but other sectors more or less flat in the last one week. Again, very strong performance uh, from most sectors in the last one month. Again, all sectors are green except for real estate and comm services that are slightly down. Uh, this right here is gonna be futures and uh, commodities. And so cotton prices, sugar prices, coffee prices, all pushing higher. Orange juice selling off and cocoa prices also down. Bitcoin almost almost getting up to record highs at $57,000 and either just over $3,200 um, as well. So if you come over to volatility, so we are once again dropping back lower, down a little bit over 2%, back down to 13 This right here, the red rectangle between 11 and 12 that's going to be a very, very important level to watch. And of course, green rectangle that's going to be sitting roughly at 18.7 to as much as 20.5. So that is also a very, very important level that we've been watching and talking about very closely here. The higher the VIX, the better the deals will be. The lower the VIX, the more cautious uh, we need to be. And going over to uh, crypto here. So again, we continue to witness Bitcoin just absolutely surging higher, almost to a record high, which sits, I believe, at well over $69,000. So if you come over to the weekly chart, uh, the all-time high sits at well over $69,000. And we have seen nothing but an enormous rally here for bitcoin just massive move to the upside from lows of 15,000 to 57,000 that's a 278 percent gain for bitcoin in such a short period of time and that next target and resistance is going to stay put at seventy thousand dollars for this very reason i started picking up ibit and uh, ibit was up four percent on the day today and of course on the week it's up eleven percent and uh, we are up very nicely 10 to 12 percent my goal ideally was to pick it up in the low 20s but this was actually not listed on fidelity up until just a few weeks ago where I was finally able to dollar cost average and buy this ETF uh, from Black from iShares. So this is a Bitcoin ETF that I'm dollar cost averaging into every week moving forward. Ether here also moving higher to over 3,200, pushing up very nicely. And that next resistance and target is going to be at 3,500. So that is going to be that next level and that next target to watch for Ether moving forward as well. Now, going over to uh, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ. So we've already talked about this in our newsletter, but uh, as we already know that we are overbought on the weekly time frame, and there is a little bit of that negative divergence, which is exactly why we need to be very, very careful. 5,000 is going to be that support level to watch in the, in the meantime. And of course, all the way down to as low as 4,800. So that's going to be that next target and that next support level to watch in case we get a breakdown below this. Uh, again, higher highs and higher lows, very nice consistent uptrend, but a breakdown below this 4,800 is gonna be next, all the way down to 4,690 to as much as 4,600 for the S&P 500. Talking about the NASDAQ here, so IXIC, very nice higher highs and higher lows. Resistance is gonna stay put at 16,200 with that negative divergence and, and of course that lower high on the RSI. Support level is going to stay put at 15,300 to 15,150. Again, we have already discussed this in our newsletter. The upside risk, upside benefit is not that favorable compared to the downside potential risk here. All the way down to 14,500, although I don't believe that we're going to see the markets all the way down to those levels, but a reasonable 7 to 11% pullback slash correction is still a possibility that we need to be aware of. That doesn't mean the markets can go higher. The markets can indeed keep drifting higher on the back of low volatility, on the back of maybe strong earnings, on the back of market momentum and the overall sentiment, which is still strong. But the idea here is not that the markets are going to go higher. It's the idea that risk reward is not that favorable 
to the upside and we need to be cautious here that's exactly why i'm gathering up more cash raising more capital for potential deals in the future because the markets will eventually give you one if you're lucky two maybe three opportunities in the in the year okay so that's something that i've tried to kind of explain in our discord as well that markets are very interesting in a, in a sense that they will give us opportunities very good and i'm talking about good solid actual serious buying opportunities when the vix is really high there's actual panic and fear in the market um, and, and stocks are selling off left and right and nobody wants anything to do with stocks markets will give you those opportunities if you're lucky a couple times a year uh, but in most bull cases and most bull markets maybe not even once uh, we're only looking at let's say pullbacks and dips to dollar cost average into but it's the rare events, it's the rare occurrences that happen every so often that are worth taking advantage of. And that's exactly what I'm here to kind of prepare you for, here to teach you, here to kind of help you understand. We kind of went through a very similar process back in, I, I know, October of 2022. Uh, you know, we were talking about bear markets. It's kind of funny that I was in uh, Italy at the time and there was this bull, uh, you know, lucky bull uh, in, in Italy where, I, where we kind of, I think, go around in circles about six, seven times. And it brings luck and prosperity uh, to everyone, right? So to you and, and of course to your communities. And I, and I shared that video in our Discord. And before you know it, October 2022 actually ended up being the low for this market. And we have since just been ripping higher over the last 12 to 18 months. So, you know, it's really kind of having a contrarian view. Uh, and I know that contrarian view doesn't always get the best, most pleasing comments. And that's okay, because if you are going against the consensus, that's really what investing and trading is all about. If, if uh, you know, if a stock or investment becomes overcrowded, do you really want to start going into that or you want to be the one getting out because you got early, right? So I think you definitely want to be the latter. You get to the party early and when it, once it gets super overcrowded, it's time for you to leave um, and you take your profits and your gains with it. So uh, that's really where we are. 16,200 is going to be that level to watch for the NASDAQ. Talking about Apple, again, a lot of these levels, a lot of the trade setups were discussed in our newsletter. So link's going to be down below if you want to access that. But support level is going to stay put down to 180, down to as low as 165, a much better, much stronger area of support and dollar cost average area at 165. Uh, talking about Amazon and Amazon here, also starting to rotate back lower from 176. So 176 is a very strong resistance. Support level is going to stay put down to 155. And also we do have a little bit of that gap that Amazon may need to fill between 165 down to 161 at the moment. Uh, talking about Tesla, and Tesla here was pushing higher, so it kind of gave back on a lot of the gains. It was up 2%, uh, I believe as much as 3%. At one point during the day, it was up trading as much as $205, but intraday sold right back down to that support roughly in the 190s and 200s. So we're kind of hovering inside this red rectangle, which is both a resistance and a support at the moment, but my target price, my profit target is going to be up to 240 to as much as 269. I actually did sell a couple of covered calls on Tesla. She might be three covered calls on Tesla that I sold today that are already up 20%. So again, selling options is the way to go, my friends. This is something that if, if you don't realize now, maybe you will realize later down the road that, okay, Caddy and MoneyVest, they were indeed correct in selling options. That's where the probability of your wins is really high that's where profitability is really high that's what the big dogs big institutions and hedge funds focus on is selling options and generating a lot of premiums and cash talking a little bit about nvidia and nvidia of course continues to trade at an all-time high just under 800 dollars support level is going to stay put down to 743 to as low as 635 dollars of course to as low as this right here is going to be a very strong support in the low 500s to as much as 495 uh, and of course, you know, very, very overbought on the RSI and MACD with a negative divergence also playing through at the moment. Talking about advanced micro devices, still struggling to break out of that resistance in the 180s. So 180, 185 is going to be that level to keep in mind for advanced micro devices. That is going to be that resistance to watch for advanced micro devices. Support level is going to stay put down to 159 to $160 per share. And of course, a breakdown below this is going to be down to $130 for advanced micro devices that is going to be the couple support and of course resistance at close to 180 185 to watch 
Uh, talking about uh, PayPal and PayPal here on the day also pushing higher. So not bad, up over 1.4%. So a little bit of that outperformance against the market and resistance going to be all the way up to this lower high to as much as $67, $68 per share. Support level is going to stay put down to $57, down to as low as $50 per share for PayPal. I did a video on PayPal recently. Definitely do check that out. And this right here is the overall downtrending channel of lower highs and lower lows for PayPal at the moment. Uh, talking about Visa and Visa here also moving lower down a little bit over 30, 34 basis points. Support level is going to stay put down to 279, $280 per share, all the way down to, of course, a much stronger area of support in the 250s and 240s for Visa moving forward. A little bit of that negative divergence that continues. Uh, and again, the price action itself trading pretty much at an all time high. Meta here, on the other hand, also trading at an all-time high, pushing up over 1%, so very strong day for Meta, outperformance against the S&P and the NASDAQ and the Dow, resistance sitting at roughly 488, that's the level that it's kind of tapping up to, and support level is going to stay put down to 449, huge gap to fail, all the way down to 383, $384, much stronger area of support to also watch for Meta. Uh, talking about Netflix, and Netflix here also continues to break to the upside a little bit over 2%, uh, breaking out above that resistance and that target of $600 that we talked about. Support level is going to stay put inside this green rectangle in the 570. So 570, 575, very, very strong area of support all the way down to 495 to low 500s. Another really important area of support to watch for Netflix. Uh, talking about Google and Google here also did drop pretty aggressively on the day yesterday and then kind of recovering a little bit back up today up almost 1%, but still this is going to be a big resistance to break out of once again in the 140s and 145. So this right here is going to be that resistance once again for Google. I do like Google a lot in the 120s and probably in the low 100s as well. Talking about Microsoft and Microsoft here, trading within the context of this uptrend of higher highs and higher lows, resistance is gonna stay put at 421, all the way down to 384, down to 366 for Microsoft. So those right there are gonna be a few support levels to watch all the way down to $340 which is going to be a much better area of support and start to go long at those prices for uh, Microsoft. Enphase was also up a little bit over 1%, uh, pushing up to 121. Uh, my calls are up 60%, 50 to 60%, and my position's obviously green as well. 138 to as much as 151, couple of resistance levels to watch for Enphase. That's going to be about a 20, 25% rally potential for Enphase. Support level is going to stay put down to 108, $109 per share for this company and all the way down to 91 $92 and a huge resistance that it's struggling to break out of in the 138 for Enphase as well. So hope you all enjoyed this video and a complete update on the entire market. Make sure that you do connect with me on Instagram. Handle is going to be CastWRP. Join our Patreon to access all the members only private videos, Excel spreadsheets, trade alerts, and our newsletters as well. And uh, let me know if you have any questions at all. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.